Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. I've just been through the Patek exhibition, the Patek exhibition, and uh, I gotta tell you, it was pretty damn good. I thought it was exceptionally good. Um, I gotta be honest with you, man, I wanna go to the Patek Museum in Switzerland, but this is a really good exhibition. So, well done to Patek Philippe. Reporting live from Singers, Singers. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel, and we're at the Patek event. This is Patek at its best. So uh, let's have a, a sticky beak. There's a lot of people here at the Patek event, and uh, we'll have a, a sticky beak. Hey, how are you? G'day, 5070. Very cool, He's hey. Famous uh, YouTuber. Oh, I'm not that famous. <laughs> I'm not like that you. famous. Yeah. Little bit, little bit. Yeah. How are you going? Good, good, good. I That's didn't fantastic. Know there's a queue. There's a queue. You need to queue up. Really? Usually no, but uh, oh. this is <laughs> quite busy today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. It's amazing. I think I have a ticket. Have a look. Have a look. Okay, so once you enter this Thank magnificent you. Patek Philippe Thank event, you. you come into an area oh, where they've got this magnificent uh, display. Um, and at the side there, they've got the Singapore exhibition where they've got this paper handicrafts with special watches. They've got a waiting area, and then they've got a uh, a uh, a bookstore, and also a bit of a cloakroom where they're also giving out back copies of Patek Philippe magazine. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was quite quite interesting. They uh, they had a few copies of some magazines. Unfortunately, they were in English and Japanese mainly. Sorry. Chinese and Japanese, I should say. Chinese and Japanese. Uh, I grabbed a few, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, not many English. The English copies had uh, gone within the first few days of the show. So let's come in here. Let's go and have a bit of a, a walk around. <laughs> And the first part is, once you come into the main hall, there's a actually a Patek Philippe cinema movie. So uh, I've been a bit of a sneaky guy. Uh, I decided to film it. So uh, just on the slide, guys, let's have a look at the Patek movie, the Patek film. Patek is born on June 6, 1812, in Piasi, a small town in eastern Poland. He is christened Anthony Patek. In 1828, just before his 16th birthday, he enlists with the Polish cavalry. He is assigned to the 1st Mounted Rifles Regiment in Warsaw. On January the 25th, 1831, the same deposes Nicholas I and declares Poland's independence. Patek is promoted to sub-lieutenant of the cavalry brigade. Patek is one of more than 10,000 insurgents and many patriots who choose exile. It is the great emigration towards the West, especially into France. Fleeing through the German states, the Polish exiles are supported by refugee committees. In 1832, Patek is in charge of one of these committees in Bamberg. Patek follows the exodus into France. He takes up residence in Cahors and later in Amiens, where he works as a typographer. Quite likely, he lives in Paris as well. In 1833, Patek travels to Switzerland. He officially registers in Versoire in 1835. In 1839, Patek establishes the Patek Chapek manufacture on Quai de Berg 15 as a three-person partnership limited in duration to six years. 
Also in 1839, Patek weds the niece of Moreau. He is naturalized in Geneva and becomes a citizen of Versoir in 1843. Philippe is born on April 16, 1815 in La Bazoche Rouet, in the department Eure et Loire. He notes a town with 2,400 souls, of whom at least half live in the countryside within a radius of an hour on foot. The father, Monsieur Philippe, a trained and skilled watchmaker, teaches his son the elements on which a sound professional education is based. After completion of his apprenticeship, Philippe asks his father for permission to embark on a tour de France to improve his occupational outlook. Aged 18 and a half, Philippe leaves his family. Nothing is known about the duration and stations of Philippe's journeyman years, except that he never arrives at Besançon, his original destination, and instead stays in Le Havre for three years. Destiny lures Philippe abroad for the first time in 1836. He accepts a job in London. Endowed with experience, Philippe returns to France in 1839 and settles in Versailles together with a young Swiss with whom he had previously worked in London. The demand for high quality timepieces is disappointing. Sluggish business encourages Philippe's quest for a truly innovative idea. A royal court watchmaker suggests it would be good to develop a watch without a winding key. That would be a ray of hope. Philippe starts working on the project right away and soon invents a simple and reliable mechanism for which he submits a patent application. In 1844, he presents his winding system at the Paris Industrial Exposition, but it doesn't achieve the breakthrough he had hoped for. In 1863, he publishes his main treatise, Watches with Keyless Works. In 1839, Patek partners with watchmaker Francois Chapek for six years. Apparently, this joint venture doesn't fulfill Patek's ambitious expectations. His encounter with Philippe coincides with the point in time when the partnership is to be renewed or terminated. In 1844, Patek aims to recruit a good watchmaker. He travels to Paris and learns about Philippe's invention at the French Industrial Exposition. Patek invites Philippe to Geneva as a replacement for Chapek. This is the letter that Philippe receives in Paris on April the 9th, 1845. Monsieur, you no doubt received my letter yesterday. Until my previous partner has coped with his new situation, he should be convinced that I am associating myself with one of the most venerable and respected establishments in Paris. No one in Geneva should know who you are. So, for the coachman, you are Monsieur Adrien. Disembark at the gates of Geneva and enter the city through the main gate or across the small suspension bridge. Do not pretend to be a voyager. Go directly to Madame Patek, Quai de Berg, number 15, on the first floor, and announce yourself as Monsieur Adrien. Until then, stay in good health. Come quickly. I shake your hand. Signed, Patek. Geneva is frequented by many Polish and Russian families that find appeal in Patek's affable and agreeable manners. Philippe is in charge of provisioning the watches that have been ordered, the completion of all watches in the production phase, the creation of new timepiece types, and the pursuit of his invention, the keyless winding works. Philippe had always dreamt of participating in the establishment of a manufacturing operation based on the principle of identical parts and assembly in batches using techniques he had learned in Paris. Patek quickly realizes that the survival of the company depended on his international clientele. Business trips are instrumental in consolidating the reputation of a watch manufacturer. In 1851, Patek and Philippe go to London separately to attend the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations. At the event, Queen Victoria purchases two watches, one for herself and one for Albert. At that time, traveling was risky and uncomfortable. The tribulations of travel are beginning. I should be in London already, but have heard that the vessel was requisitioned by the British government. 
Instead of 10 days, we were en route for 14 days, and the weather was terrible. I suffered. For the first time in years, I was starving because we were held up in the midst of a forest by the derailed locomotive of an oncoming train. This trip would enable him to increase the number of commissions. He returns home with a reassuring order from Tiffany for 130 watches. Patek arrives in Geneva, afflicted with rheumatism in all extremities. On December the 12th, 1898, Henri Stern and his wife Louise founded a dial manufacture on Rue Seyard, located in the Geneva Watchmakers and Jewelers district. It soon became a modern company with a strong reputation. Their two sons, Charles and Jean, helped the family make the business a success. After the death of their father, the two brothers took the reins of the company and managed to become the exclusive supplier to Patek Philippe, which was around 60 years old at that time. The role of their mother, Louise, was key. Her business vision and ambition prompted them to take the step from being suppliers to investing in Patek Philippe. The 1929 economic crisis forced Adrien Philippe, grandson of the founder, to sell the company. On March the 21st in 1932, Charles and Jean took the opportunity to become majority shareholders of Patek Philippe. The first major change they made in the company was to reorganize Patek Philippe's production processes. From that point on, it was the Stern family, generation after generation, which made Patek Philippe grow to become the company we know today. Charles Stern's son, Henri, born in 1911, continued the legacy started by his father and uncle. He initially trained at the School of Decorative Arts in Geneva, specializing in engraving and jewelry. At the age of 24, Henri joined the company to assume administrative and commercial functions. On September the 30th, 1937, when he'd only been in the business two years, he was urged to travel to the New York office where results left much to be desired. Thanks to his organization skills, he solved the problems and achieved a rapid turnaround. In 1939, he became a member of the board of Patek Philippe. In this position, he traveled extensively to promote Patek Philippe and enhance the brand's reputation. Henri visited various capitals, such as Caracas and Panama City, to strengthen commercial ties in Latin America, where exclusive timepieces from Europe met with keen interest. The demand for Patek Philippe watches increased in the U.S., and on May 7, 1946, he established the Henri Stern Watch Agency on Rockefeller Plaza. It served as the company's sole distributor in the United States. On December 18, 1958, he returned to Geneva, where he was appointed CEO of Patek Philippe, and later he became president of the company. Henri was known for his interest in art, he illustrated his stays in the U.S. and photographed the places and clients he visited as part of his sales work. Henri was also closely associated with the artisanal community in Geneva. His artistic sensibility is perfectly reflected in the advertising campaigns he directed at the time. They stand out as being very innovative. Thanks to these campaigns, he managed to differentiate the company and convey the core values of Patek Philippe. These values include a very important one, the tightly knit nature of the family business, reflected in the close relationships with its employees and partners around the world. Philippe, Henri's son and representative of the third generation, inherited the responsibility of continuing the Stern family legacy. After earning a degree in economics and social sciences, he joined the company on June the 3rd, 1963. As his father before him, he worked in various departments to gain insights into the family business. At the Henri Stern Watch Agency, he focused on watch retailing, 
collaborating directly with retailers and customers. And in Geneva, he worked in administration, finance and sales and marketing. During the challenging 1970s, at the height of the quartz crisis, Philippe Stern decided, contrary to most other companies in the industry, to continue investing in mechanical watches, many of which subsequently gained cult status. Thus, the manufacturer kept focused on what it had been doing since 1839, crafting the finest Swiss watches. The experience Philippe gained is reflected in the strategy he put in place for the firm, and illustrated in landmarks such as the launch of the Nautilus collection on March 4, 1976, with the involvement of famous designer Gérard Jantin. A year later, in 1977, at the age of 39, he was appointed CEO. Another major watershed event at Patek Philippe was the launch of the famous Calibre 89 on January the 12th, 1989. It is no doubt the most complex watch ever made by the company to celebrate its 150 year anniversary. Philippe took over from his father and was appointed president in 1993. He also contributed to the momentum of the manufacture with construction and renovation projects, most significantly by regrouping all production processes at the Plan Les Watt site in 1996. This is where the Star Calibre 2000 was created to usher in the new millennium. Philippe handled other seminal projects and made a lifetime passion come true by establishing the Patek Philippe Museum with its remarkable timepiece collection in 2001 and by refurbishing the historical building on Rue de Rome in Geneva in 2006. Philippe expanded Patek Philippe's global distribution network with a focus in Asia while establishing strong relationships with retail partners. In his travels, his main objective was to consolidate the company's reputation in watchmaking craftsmanship and its tradition of innovation as a leader in the haute horologie segment. Thierry Stern, the son of Philippe and grandson of Henri, was literally born into the family watchmaking tradition. His passion for fine watches started in his childhood. After attending the Geneva Business School, he complemented his studies at the watchmaking school in Geneva, where he honed his skills in the field of mechanical horology. In 1990, he traveled to Germany to gain sales experience at the retail level. Two years later, he moved to the US for the same reason. Upon his return to Geneva, he immersed himself in the realm of production, starting in the case and bracelet manufacture. He worked shoulder to shoulder with specialists and also learned all about the famous Patek Philippe Tour de Main. In 1998, Thierry was appointed head of watch creation at Patek Philippe, where he achieved his greatest success, maintaining the balance between tradition and innovation with timeless designs. Thierry managed to further integrate sophisticated technologies into the production process without compromising on the value of watchmaking craftsmanship. His goal was to ensure maximum accuracy and long-term reliability. For generations, the Stern family has shared a common passion for fine arts and rare handcrafts. Every year, Patek Philippe launches one-of-a-kind masterpieces that celebrate these venerable skills. For Thierry Stern, artisanship is inextricably linked with the legacy of the manufacture. Thierry, like his father and grandfather, is a passionate communicator and ambassador of the family-owned company. He regularly travels all over the world to personally meet the press, clients and partners, attending major events and visiting all points of sale to show support, share his enthusiasm for the brand, and learn about the market to strengthen Patek Philippe's global presence. 2014 was a very important year, marking the 175-year anniversary of Patek Philippe. With sparkle in his eyes, Thierry Stern decided to support the famous fireworks of the Geneva Festival 2014. This childhood dream coincided with the bicentennial of the city of Calvin joining the Confederation, as well as the 175th anniversary of the watchmaking company. It was under Thierry Stern's guidance that the Grandmaster Chime was created as the main showpiece for commemorating the anniversary. It is Patek Philippe's most complicated wristwatch, featuring a reversible case with two faces, as well as five chimes and six patented innovations. Thierry is currently president of Patek Philippe and a member of the board. His father, Philippe, is honorary president. Both hold office with the assistance of Claude Penet, the CEO and also a board member of Patek Philippe. One of the milestones that mark the transition of the presidency from Philippe to Thierry Stern is the introduction of the Patek Philippe seal, an all-encompassing hallmark of quality in watchmaking. This is Patek Philippe, primarily a family business striving to improve generation after generation, day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, second after second, to achieve accuracy and perfection in everything it does, as mandated by Patek Philippe's values. Each other's arm
time to go.